Hello and welcome to News Click. We are mapping the elections with Seema Mustafa and today we are going to discuss Bihar, another key state and where an alliance of sorts have been stitched between the RJD and the Congress. Seema, unlike UP where shall we say the alliance picture doesn't look very bright, this is relatively a better picture in terms of alliance though the left is outside the alliance and as we know Bihar, the CPI, the liberation as well as uh, the CPIM has some, some pockets of strength. It seems that liberation still may get one seat, right. looks like, not clear at the moment. But do you think it is a better picture than what we were, we were thinking a few days back? Yes, it's improved in the sense that the Congress has got off its high horse and agreed to part with a few seats uh, to accommodate the regional parties. And um, it's a good thing that the RJD has been able to get Manji away from the BJP, has got Kushwaha, and of course Sharad Yadav. And uh, to the ML, they've offered one seat. ML wanted five seats, now, uh, which is a little high. So ML will have to realize whether it's going to uh, accept that one seat, which could, it could have a good chance of winning. Also, Begu Sarai, the other seat where CPI had Kanhaya Kumar, who was quite a charismatic young leader for in, in, uh, in Bihar as well as other parts of the country, who has been a very a good, shall we say, a voice in terms of being able to articulate a lot of the issues. Begu Sarai has also not been offered to the CPI and that's the other major... Yeah, uh, and I think that uh, also indicates, you know, it's sort of uh, has... There's a commentary there on the larger elections that we are fighting. That while you're fighting or the regional parties and the Congress say that they're fighting to defeat the BJP, the kind of concessions that you have to make for each other to get in good voices, good leaders in are not being made. I remember that uh, Lalu, uh, Yadav and Tejashvi both had actually been very keen that um, uh, Kanaya contests from Begu Sarai or definitely from Bihar. But over the weeks it started changing or over the months it started changing because obviously people came and you know spoke in their ear and then this whole thing of Kanaya becoming a, uh, which we were discussing a little before, uh, becoming a counter to Tejashvi or to the RJD sort of was used to frighten them into not giving him a seat from Bihar, which I think is tragic because Kanea is a good voice, he's a good leader, he articulates, he's got a lot of potential for the future and one would think that in this election you're going to leave all that behind and go and support the kind of voices you need, but that's not happening. So that's an interesting point that you're making, that it's not only about, shall we say, defeating the BJP, but how to jockey in what they are already thinking of a post-BJP scenario and whether that is even likely to happen is not, does not seem to be the calculation because otherwise we can't explain, for instance, what the Congress is doing in UP. Yeah. That it's really looking at the post-2019 elections yeah. and thinking about Assembly, who becomes the Chief Minister, projecting Priyanka as a figure. All of these doesn't make sense if we're talking of 2019 election. And if you remember, Rahul Gandhi made that statement. We're looking at 2022. Yeah, but then in 2022, there should be a party left or a country left to fight an election, right? In the sense that this is a crucial election where you needed a break from what's been going on for the last five years. And you expected the opposition to come together, led by the Congress maybe, into, into actually breaking a certain pattern that has set and has been set very adroitly and very cleverly by Prime Minister Modi and all the people working with him. Now you're on, up against somebody who's a human dynamo, who's working day and night, who's got all kinds of strategy and every trick in the book from uh, lies to truth, uh, if you want That's to say. Post-truth electoral Post -truth. Politics, But you know, you can't talk of 2022 scenario. when 2019 is, if you're defeated in 2019. That's, that's the, that's, shall we say, the short term against the really, the yeah. shorter term. Yeah. <laughs> that seems yeah. to be the problem. Yeah. That, what is it that we are, these, these parties? You know, uh, somehow, sometimes it's so weird that you find the Congress or even the regional parties talk, well, actually not the regional parties because they never talk of a vision. They don't claim to talk like that. But the Congress talks of a vision at a time when it should be looking immediate and it 
looks at immediate when it should be having a vision. And somehow marrying the two has become very difficult. Looking at the pure electoral arithmetic, if we see the 2014 election, the JDU, Nitish fought independently of the BJP in that elections. And you had the other parties coming together, except the left, some of the sections of the left uh, fought independently. If you take that, BJP got 31 seats out of 40. Two were Nitish's party who fought separately. If you put their votes together, it would have been a near sweep of the uh, state. Mm -hmm. Bihar would have gone almost entirely to the BJP Nitish alliance. Now, Nitish joined, as you remember, the Mahagadbandhan, which then left. Lalu swept the state. Grand then betrayal. Left again, <laughs> again went back yeah. uh, to his old fold, shall we say, yeah. the, the BJP. Now, with all this, it would be argument is that. Nitish has really lost a significant uh, support base. And putting Lalu in jail, which is what his, he seemed to have done, and they were once upon a time the leaders of the Bihar student movement, the face of the movement, the socialist movement at the time, that has also gone against uh, Nitish. So do you think it would have at least a significant electoral repercussions on Nitish and his party? I think, I think we're also looking at a fairly bright leader in Tejashvi, you know. So while he might be taking his directions and instructions to some extent from Lalu Yadav, he's shown a certain maturity right from the beginning. When RJD and Nitish Kumar had come together to form the Mahagad Mandan, and they formed the government, and they swept Bihar in that sense, uh, and there were differences between Lalu and Nitish because of all the baggage they carried from the Jantadal days. Tejashvi was playing a very major mediatory role and trying to ensure that the two kept together. So he showed maturity at his young age from then. And I think he has played a very key role in getting all these smaller parties together. So regardless of what was happening between RJD and the Congress, he worked in this last year or two years to get these very difficult characters like Manji and the other, and Kushwaha and others to get in, them into the RJD. To the point that right at the very end, when the smaller parties were saying that, you know, one seat's not enough, you've got to give us more, he actually worked on the Congress to part with a couple of seats, reduced his own tally, and made sure that the smaller regional parties were accommodated to keep that alliance together. Now, there also, I think he set out a larger mes message in Bihar, just like Akhilesh Yadav has in UP, that you've got to bend and you have to give up some to get much more. Well, except for the Kanhaya issue, where, of course, yeah. that hasn't happened. But also accommodating JDU figures like Sharad Yadav. Yes, yes. That's also the yes, other part Yes, of it. And Sharad Yadav really had nowhere to go if RJD had not accommodated him because he took a position, he moved out, he's on his own. We know he doesn't have much of a mass base. He's become and always was a Delhi leader for a long time. Uh, but even so, he's been accommodated and they are giving him a seat or two. So all of this seems to indicate that we will see some shift, some shift from the 2014 figures. And we are calculating, this is our, shall we say, uh, cephology a little early without much uh, samples and so on. We would say that Ditish, who got 17% of votes in the election, standing on his own or otherwise, uh, that is going to lose, we're going to see some losses. And we project that there will be at least a five to six percent loss there. And 2014, Modi was at his peak, no longer the scenario, particularly in the north, you, the Hindi heartland, he is not going to give the uh, come up, all the promises that he had made have not delivered. Only thing that has happened is the uh, really the communalization, the hate, all of that. So only yeah, I think, I think what is very, what we need to see, and we'll only see that when the campaign starts and the candidates are announced, um, which is just, a, again, without much substance, but just a feeling that you get from the ground, is that in this election, you're going to, unlike the 2014 election where all the castes moved out and they voted for Modi and the BJP, so you had the Yadav youth, you had um, sections of the Dalit, which had earlier voted not BJP, you had some sections of the back backwards. A lot of the vote that gathered around the upper caste 
somehow I don't know. Uh, it, you once getting the feeling from maybe after the assembly elections that everybody's settling back into their caste grooves, you know. So this time the Yadav voting, say in UP for Akhilesh, will be much larger section that voted for him in uh, for that party in 2014, and the same is probably going to happen. So that's putting it another way. Yeah. The BJP's upper caste consolidation has happened because of the kind of positions they have taken up. Therefore, the other groups have also consolidated yeah. in, in a reverse that's way. That's right, because there's a very aggressive assertion of the upper caste. And that has been fueled a little too aggressively, maybe, by the BJP through Palakot and Pulwama and the 10% reservations that they've given to the economically upward uh, uh, classes. So that would you would know knowing how close the caste system is knit in these two states, in the Hindi heartland, as it were, would impact on the other castes. This is the yes. home of the caste system in yes. India, yes. because this is the ancient Magadha state, yes. and all of that it represents. And that's why they talked of social engineering last time, so-called social engineering of Amit Shah. Well, he did have it because he went to Apnadal, he went to Kushwaha, he went to Manji, he got Manji. all of them out and he got all these people together. Now, they, just the fact that they've drifted away is an indicative, not because they're great visionaries, but because the castes are reacting. Upper caste consolidation yeah. again. So we are looking at if, for instance, weakening of Nitish, the shall we say the upper caste consolidation, which means other sections move away from it, we are looking at something possibly in the range of 8% swing uh, against what, if you put Nitish and BJP votes together, what you would see. And it seems this, this, this would be a 20-20, meaning 50-50 split. That's, that's what it seems to show. Yeah, just one thing about Nitish before I forget. If you remember in the last assembly elections, <clears throat> when he did very well <clears throat> and he got together with RJD, he was at his height. He was at this yes. peak, yes. right? And everybody said the vote is for Nitish. And Nitish is the great guy. And I remember we covered the elections, went into the villages. Everybody said Nitish way, Nitish way. But RJD got more seats. Yes, that's true. He got about 102. This guy got about 100. So RJD, which didn't seem to be a major factor and before this election had almost gone down, suddenly emerged and was 102, where Nitish got, that was the real problem that Nitish had with Lalu. Because that whole Yadav base came back to you, uh, Lalu after a gap of 5-10 years. And also a lot of the other sections. Yeah, yeah, movement. yeah, yeah. But Yadav was his core constituency which had gone away to some extent or eroded. It all came back. And there is no sign in these intervening years that that constituency and support has cracked. Like you said earlier that Lalu being in jail is a sympathy factor. And somehow that Yadav vote hasn't moved away. You know, somebody was telling me that Bihar still, Lalu has a soft corner among the Bihari population, irrespective of caste. They might not vote for him, but they still have a soft corner mm -hmm. for him. You know, that's, that is there. Not so, the upper caste, by the way. They think no, he's a goon. Upper, upper caste, they think he's a gunda and he uses by the, yeah, you know, works by the lati. have hated Lalu. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And they have hated the bundle plank yeah. in any case. And let's be very So there's clear. that confrontation that continues. Yeah, that, that is consistent yeah. because they ruled the state yeah. before the emergence of Lalu and Nitish and all these other figures. They were ruling the state. Mm -hmm. Now coming back to if the left had come in this with the other sections together, the if wishes, gen, if wishes were, were horses. horses, if our <laughs> wishes were horses, you know, so that would have been even with this swing, uh, which we still think would could be even larger, would be something like twenty three seats for the, uh, shall we say, the RJD, the Congress, and the left. We would have seen the. 23 against 17 of the BJP, a difference of six seats. So the not giving the left any space could cost this alliance up to six seats. This is what the figures seem to show. Because we are not at the moment, as I said, doing predictions. We are just looking at the electoral, yeah. uh, the voting I, I, figures. I, I'm not and very sure. I mean, I, I know that's uh, the way it's sort of looking at your in your graph, and probably that's true, but that's something I haven't really analyzed because I think that the ML was asking five seats, which even Manji wasn't, so the RJD was not going to give that. 
the CPM wanted one or two seats, two seats. The CPI was asking for five, so about 10, 15 seats. I don't I, think the alliance would have given. Yeah, I think the probably, you know, when you start the negotiations, yeah. look at what the Congress was yeah. starting in the negotiations. I think it if the down. both sides had gone to about five or six seats, mm -hmm. I think this was a credible uh, yeah, demand. It would have, it would have and what it looks like, mm -hmm. it's credible even with the based on electoral arithmetic. Yeah. Now, here is the issue that both the Congress and the uh, RJD would like to win seats, would like to gain seats, but doesn't want the left also, as we saw in uh, UP, other character, other issues, who becomes the chief minister, this kind of calculation in Bihar. You know, me, I feel, I feel it's uh, just the fact, and I'm, I'm telling you, I really start from negative, where all the regional coalitions are concerned. So just the very fact that RJD and Congress have kept that alliance together is number one, good. Number two, I feel that they've gotten these smaller parties, which are very cantankerous parties, and got them there. That's good. So we've got two goods and one bad where the left wasn't accommodated. Yeah, because uh, if it had, I but think, I think yeah. in Bihar. You know, both CPI has an old base and also well, it liberation didn't, has some It didn't really show up in the people. last election, but yeah. You know, that's the distributed strength yeah. problem. If you have distributed strength, the winning seats is difficult. Yeah. They have some pockets, but still distributed weakness, shall we say, or distributed strength, whichever you put. I think in these elections, what is now going to be very important is for all the regional parties to hold together. Because if you look at it, everywhere, they are the ones who are striking successful coalitions as compared to, say, the Congress. So the left right. has generally kept out of it because it's made it very clear it doesn't really want to get into this. But it's uh, willing to have seat adjustments. Some adjustments here and there, yeah. Offer seats yeah. to, you know, which yeah. will make sense to them. It's interesting what you were saying, that where the Congress is the lead party, mm -hmm. the alliances are not happening. Mm -hmm. Where other parties are the lead party, they're alliances having that, seems, yeah. seems to be I mean, look at UP, I, you know, for all of us who followed elections, just the very fact that you have the Samajwadi coming together with the uh, uh, Mayawati BSP. and the BSP is something astounding. They were hardcore rivals. It's almost like the left coming together with Mamta in West Bengal, you know. These are things which you can't think would happen. But, but here, this it did. It's different in the sense, don't forget that the bitterness started with what happened in a particular incident where Mayavati was assaulted. Mm -hmm. And she never forgave Mulayam for that. And no, and they were two parties who were contending each other. Yeah, but it was also at that time they were in alliance. Yeah. And when yeah. uh, Mayavati was assaulted, yeah. so they were in alliance. Yeah. But it's also what Mulayam did at that point of time, which if you or I were in Mayavati's shoes, I don't think we would have forgiven Absolutely. either. So, so I think that's, that's also what I'm the saying. Fact it's very Mulayam good going, that they've. Mulayam going away and Akhilesh emerging has also made that also part of the it. Also, Akhilesh's happened. ability to, like I said, bend forward a little bit, the backwards. Bend. As you would say. Bend. Yeah. Simply bend, bend. and yeah. offer, offer an e Akhilesh. equality which, you know, well, I would never have probably offered even if he came into a coalition like But this. it's very clear to go back to Bihar that your alliance is going to do well uh, and definitely better than the last election. That is almost a given. Also because apart from the fact that it's a broader alliance and a better alliance and more thought out, uh, the BJP is also suffering from deep factionalism there. So it is all going to be, as they are counting, that in all the states it's going to be Modi, 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 Modi. So the whole vote sort of converges for the Lok Sabha for the prime ministerial candidate and doesn't really talk about the BJP. Now, to what extent that actually happens that will determine a lot of things. So more presidential form of elections, yes. will that happen or not is the question. Yes. Thank you, Seema, for being with us. We'll continue to map the elections. The, it's really now three weeks four weeks that we are going to start, uh, shall we say, the election scenario unfolding in different yeah. states. So we will, be, we will continue to map it the way we have done for the last two weeks. Thank you for watching News Click. We had this election mapping that we are doing with CIMA is also in collaboration with Citizen. Do keep watching us and Citizen as well.